The Royal Game of Ur Kickstarter is complete. I've shipped out all of the rewards and everybody should have what they were looking for. But I had a number of people ask me how I was going to paint the boards and to tell them because a lot of people didn't buy the painted boards but wanted to paint it themselves. So this video will be to explain how to paint a 3D print and how to go from this to this. <music> So painting 3D prints actually isn't that difficult. They take acrylics just fine. And if you simply paint them with acrylics and then hit them with a little bit of shellac or finish to make sure that they get uh, a nice sealant on there, then generally speaking, that's enough. However, I use some advanced painting techniques on these boards, both to make the process a little bit faster and easier, but also to give it this really great looking antiqued feel. Now, I did try to cut as many corners as I could, because partially because I had a lot of boards to paint, and so I wanted to do them as quickly and efficiently as possible. However, in the end, a lot of those corners didn't work, so let me start by telling you what didn't work. My first thought was to make a stencil, something that you could snap over top of this and then just spray paint it right down. And while making a 3D printed stencil that I could just move from one to the other was viable on the smaller boards. When it came to these bigger boards, I just didn't have a printer at the time that could print something this wide. And the stencils didn't really work. They never quite mad, uh, made it up tight enough to not allow for any bleed to come out. So every time I tried using the stencil, I always had to paint over it and start over. It just was not good enough. So stencils were out. The other thing that I tried doing was I started with a white or light colored base color so that I could skip the priming step. And the result of that was that the final step, the wash that I will explain later, kind of soaked into those layer lines and ended up bleeding. And, and the wash also didn't sit on the top quite the way that I was hoping and it didn't bead up. So against a pure plastic, the wash failed. Now, if you're not using a wash, if you're not going to use that technique, then I suppose there's nothing wrong with starting with a white color and just putting the color on there. But if you really want to get this beautiful antique looking finish on it and really make the, the lines pop on the, on the le uh, uh, individual details that you don't color, then you're going to need to prime it. So now that we talked about what not to do, let's talk about the steps that we do need to do. To begin with, prime your print. You can either prime the whole thing or you can simply prime the mask off most of it and just prime the board. Now, I just primed the board on these ones because I primed it with the white color that I was using and I wanted to leave the black alone. However, for a lighter color board, you might want to simply prime the whole thing so that you don't get bleed with the wash later. Once the priming is done, then it's time to paint in the details. And this is simply done with acrylic paint. Now, notice that these Royal Game of Ur boards only really have uh, a handful of colors, red, blue, and then white and maybe a darker blue for the lines in between. And all of that's going to have to be painted by hand, but fortunately there's not a whole lot of color or variation to print. Of course, you can make it more colorful and more varied if you want, and that's up to you because it's your board, but I was going for something that looked like the artifact, and so I kept with the basic colors of blue and red against the white. I printed a darker, I painted a darker blue on the lines between them, just highlight a little bit of blue and highlight a little bit of red. Now for that final step, the wash. A wash is a painting technique that mini miniature artists have been using for years to give things an uneven but still good looking feel. The idea is to hit it with a watered down paint that then pools up in the corners and, and pools irregularly around your, your model. Now, I actually used a tip that was passed on to me by somebody on Thingiverse. His friend had painted the board, and when he did the wash, instead of watering down paint and then hitting it with a finish, uh, a shellac or something to go over the top of it, he kind of did two in one. He used wood stain. Wood stain is already kind of watered down. It'll pool up 
And if you use a polyurethane wood stain, it seals it as well. So you can do two in one. See, I did manage to cut one little corner. On these boards, we're looking at cedar red from the wood stain that I use. But wood stain as a wash works fine. You just paint it kind of liberally on there. And if you feel that it's pooling up too much on the top surfaces, I found that I was able to use a, a paper towel and just, just dab that off of there. Not too much. You, you still want it to be irregular and you want it to pull down into the middle. But for the most part, if you just let it dry on there, most likely it'll fall into the into the nooks and crannies and, and it'll make those details really pop and it'll give your board an uneven but beautiful finished look. And there you go. That's all it is. Really four simple steps to paint it. It does take an hour or a couple of hours to do this, but when you're done, the result is absolutely beautiful. Now, I've got a few extras of these boards that I'm probably going to put on my Etsy store uh, for people to buy. So if you would like to, and if you missed the Kickstarter, I'll put these out. These are the ones that are uh, less perfect. There are little, little mistakes in them. And so I'll be selling these for Kickstarter prices, but I probably won't be selling any more after this, especially not painted because that's a lot of work to go through. And, and I really underestimated the amount of work, even though the final result is absolutely beautiful. But if you'd like I'll let you have a Royal Game of Ur that you can paint yourself. You can 3D print your own. Links will be in the description. So that's it. With the exception of one last board, the bronze fill board that I'm going, I, I have printed, and this is much heavier than I expected. I'm going to very gingerly pop it open, make sure that it's all good, make sure I don't have to reprint it, and then I'm going to see if I can do a little bit of polish and finishing on this board, and then that Kickstarter is done and I want to thank you all for your support which means it's time for me to launch another Kickstarter and I'm going to now take the low poly dinos that I've been making and see how many low poly dinos you guys want to see more than just these three that we're starting with let's let's see if we can make an entire low polysaurus park and if you'd like to know more information about that there will be a link in the description and I hope that you're excited for that as always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I want to thank you for your contributions and especially thank my Patreon backers, but even just you for viewing it. You're awesome. Thank you very much. And as always, I want to say safety first. See you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing, but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer, but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here now for you. Buy it on Amazon.